What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm gonna to be answering the top eight questions about kiteboarding. So this should be super useful for if you're brand new to kiteboarding, you've been kiteboarding for a few weeks, and even if you've been kiteboarding for a few years, there are a few questions in here that I'm pretty sure you don't know the answers to. So, let's go boots. One, three, five, go! Coming from the wild, wild west indeed. Okay, so question number one, which is the most asked question for people who are just starting out, is how much does it cost to get into kiteboarding? The big question, everyone wants to know this. And kiteboarding is definitely not the cheapest sport to get into, but it's also not too bad once you have the gear and you've taken some lessons. So those are the two most expensive things when you first start thinking about getting into kiting, is kiteboarding lessons and kiteboarding gear. So I'm gonna break down the cost of each right now. First off, kiteboarding lessons. This is super important um, and it's basically the first step to actually getting into kiteboarding and surviving your first lesson. You can obviously try and take a lesson from a friend, which I would not recommend for the first four hours or so because there are a lot of core basics and safety things that you need to know about kiteboarding. So definitely take some lessons first. And the rough cost for lessons are anywhere between 90 US an hour all the way up to 150 US an hour. And it takes around 10 to 12 hours to get to where you're pretty self-sufficient and you can almost officially call yourself a kiteboarder. But you're riding upwind and you can kind of hold ground and you're just safe with the kiteboard and doing your thing. And then next up is how much does kiteboarding gear cost? Because that's kind of the next step once you've taken some lessons and you've kind of figured out kiting. And this is the next big investment. Kiteboarding gear can be anywhere from around 2,500 US to 3,600 US, depending on, you know, if you get new gear, how much gear you get, and all those variables, basically. Uh, for those of you guys who don't know, I write for a company called Tona Kiteboarding. You can check them out at tonalife.com. And we make a uh, awesome gear that's also pretty affordable. So I'm gonna be using our prices as a base model. Obviously certain brands are more expensive, certain brands maybe even a little bit cheaper. But yeah, roughly when you get into kiteboarding, you're gonna need a handful of things. You're basically gonna need a kiteboard, you're gonna need a harness, you're gonna need a kite, you're gonna need a bar, and you're also gonna need a pump. So those are the biggest things you need just to kind of have a setup and be able to kite whenever you want. But uh, really the ideal setup for, if you're super serious about kiting, you need at least two kites. So depending on your weight, depending on where you're kiting in the world, you should have at least two kites. My personal two kites that I always have are 10 and 12. Those are the most used sizes that I have. And then as far as boards go, it can be a bit tricky as a beginner because a lot of beginner boards are super big and super useful for when you're just starting out, just figuring out how to ride. But then once you kind of figure out how to go up in and you're pretty confident riding, the boards become pretty much obsolete. So if you're looking to buy some gear and you want to check out Tona stuff, I would recommend checking out the Joyride if you're kind of brand new to kiting. Uh, or you're just kind of getting into it and still figuring things out because it's a great board that makes it easy to uh, learn how to ride and stay up wind, but it's also a board that you can progress and advance on. So yeah, if you want to check that out, all this stuff that I talk about will be linked in the description below. But yeah, those are the top two questions and the top two most expensive things about getting into kiteboarding, kite lessons, and kite gear. Question number three, uh, which kind of relates to question number two. Uh, does a wakeboard work for kiteboarding and does a kiteboard work for wakeboarding? So this is kind of a tricky question. Basically a wakeboard is not going to work very well for kiteboarding because a lot of wakeboards have a lot of rocker, which is kind of a banana in the board, which basically means the board needs a lot of power to get planing and stay planing. So that's why most wakeboards just won't be very efficient on a kite because a kite does not have as much power as a boat. Um, and then for kiteboarding is working and then for kiteboards working as a wakeboard, a lot of them actually do, but again, it's not perfect, most of them, because uh, kiteboards have a lot less rocker, so a little bit less banana. That way you can get planing a lot easier and you need a lot less power to stay riding. So they can work behind a boat, they can work at a cable park, but a lot of them won't be that great because they're usually not as stiff and they also don't have as much rocker, so the landings are gonna be very hard and you're gonna find that you're riding a little bit faster than you want to be. But again, if you're someone looking for a hybrid board, Tona actually makes a very good one called the Tona Flow, 
which I'd recommend checking out. Again, it'll be down in the description below. And that's kind of a hybrid because it's a fairly stiff setup, has kind of like mid-range rocker, so it creates nice soft landings kiting. It needs a little bit more power than the average kite board, but it's not a wake board. But then it also has enough rocker to be pretty comfy and work very well at the cable park. Question number four, can you kite in the rain? A lot of people ask this question and basically the short answer is no, you shouldn't really kite in the rain. Uh, depending on where you are, usually rain means the weather's changing a lot, especially here in the Caribbean. If you see a big dark cloud, it means a squall's coming, it means the weather's gonna get really funky. It's either gonna get super duper windy, the wind direction's gonna change, or the wind's gonna completely die. So usually, if it's about to rain or it already is raining, I'd recommend going in. <laughs> I'd recommend going in, putting your kite down, letting it pass, and kinda waiting for it to clear up because it's a lot safer to kite when the weather's clear and it's not raining. But with that said, a lot of places in the world have pretty funky weather and a lot of places in Europe, it kind of rains all the time. So you kind of always end up having to kite in the rain. So you can obviously kite in the rain, but whenever you're doing that, uh, just be aware of other kiters and keep an eye on them to see if they are staying out or if they're coming in. Because usually what everyone's doing is worth paying attention to. Uh, and riding in the rain is always a bit fun because it feels like people are throwing little stones at you. So yeah, short answer is you sh probably shouldn't ride in the rain, but some places it's actually okay to ride in the rain. Just keep an eye on the weather and keep an eye on what's happening around you. And then question number five, can you kiteboard alone? Um, technically you can if you get into self-launching or self-landing. I've actually made a video on that, which you can check out right up here. But basically, it's better as a group. You wanna have at least one other friend that you guys can kind of help each other out because kiteboarding is still pretty an extreme dangerous sport. You can have a lot of sessions when you go out and come back and it's totally fine and there were no issues. But it's ideal to have at least one other person around to help you launch and land, which is very handy, very useful for pretty much everyone, beginners or advanced people. It's nice to be able to have someone to help you launch and land. And then just for general safety, it's nice to have someone around in case you do a big jump, you catch an edge, you injure yourself and you need help. It's definitely a lot easier to get help if someone else is around. So always take that into note. You can kite by yourself, but it's a lot safer to kite with someone else. And the next question is, are kite bars interchangeable? Great question. A lot of people ask this because sometimes they want to buy a kite and they already have a pretty good bar, so they don't want to buy a kite and bar from one brand. And most bars are interchangeable. Only thing you got to really check for is if the bar is four line or five line. I would say 90% of kites are four line, so you probably have a four line bar. And once the lines are the same length, they usually work on pretty much all kites once they're set up for four lines. Only thing that you may run into is backstalling, which is where you pull in on the kite. When you pull in on the bar and basically the kite goes from flying to falling backwards. And if that's happening, you can either try and take your back lines down a knot or depower your depower strap. And that may help you get away with using a bar that's from a different brand on a different kite. So it's not really ideal. It's kind of better to always have the same bar and kite from one brand. But if you do get stuck and you kind of want to switch it up, you can definitely try it out. And then the next question is, who's faster, a windsurfer or a kiteboarder? This is a big question and a big debate because windsurfers and kiteboarders kind of have a history of like fighting against each other because windsurfing was a cool sport and then kiting kind of came and kind of took over. But basically, according to Google, uh, the top speed for a windsurfer is 53.27 knots, which is kind of on a flat straight line. And then the top speed for a kiteboarder is 57. 97 knots. So according to Google, not according to me guys, according to Google, kiteboarders are currently quite a bit faster than windsurfers. Alrighty guys, and then the last question, which a lot of people always ask, especially if they're not into kiting, and it's actually something that I didn't even know until I was gonna make this video, is when was kiteboarding invented? And I'll give you a second to take a guess right now. If you think you know what it is, drop a comment down below because I had no idea kiteboarding's kind of been around for this long. So basically the first time kiteboarding was ever like experimented with was in 1970 and 1984 by these two brothers called Bruno and Dominique Legano. 
Fox, I think I'm probably butchering their name, but they're from France. They were developing stuff on the Atlantic coast of France and they started developing kites in 1970s and in the early 1980s, they patterned an inflatable kite. And basically that's when, you know, the idea of kiteboarding became a lot more real because they patented a design that a lot of brands could then attach to and start making kites. So big brands that have been around, like that were, that were big into windsurfing, that's when they first started to experiment with kites, is like 1984. So yeah, it's pretty crazy. Kiteboarding's kind of existed since 1974, 1984, but it didn't really take off until around 1988, 2000. That's kind of when kiting really started to take off and a lot of big brands latched onto those pattern designs and actually started developing kites. So yeah, kiteboarding's been around for quite a little bit now. Still a young sport, still growing, but you know, it's pretty cool that the idea was sprouted in like 1970s. What? So yeah guys, uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, those are the top eight questions that I could come up with that a lot of people kind of ask and maybe pretty useful to know if you're kind of just getting into it or you just fascinated by the sport of kiteboarding and want to know more about it. Uh, hopefully this video helped you out. If it did, make sure you drop a little comment down below with some questions that you may have that didn't get answered and also feel free to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos and if you know someone who's really stoked on kiting or just getting into it feel free to send them this video as well it may help them out with the uh, kite lesson stress the uh, kite gear stress and so on and so forth but that's pretty much it bruce uh big thanks for tuning in and i'll see you guys soon in another video peace love and big ups <laughs> Woo!